Alrighty. Uh, probably a good place for us to begin, uh, Kingsley, with you giving us a little bit of a background on your experiences with blended learning, particularly in the electrical field. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> You'll have to excuse me, by the way. I'm getting over a, a cold or a flu, so I uh, hope <laughs> I don't start showing signs of that. Uh, I started experimenting with blended learning uh, soon after I started teaching about six years ago. Um, I found that the existing resources were uh, embarrassing and uh, every day I'd ask myself, would I like to be a student in my class? Um, so I started uh, searching for something that would help me help the students. and. Uh, I found some amazing and interesting uh, resources and I needed to find a way of putting them in the hands of the student. Um, the, the chalk and talk and the, the death by PowerPoint presentations had sucked the life out of the class and uh, I, I wanted to step away from that type of delivery uh, as far as I could. Um, I challenged myself to um, provide the best training experience without, with the least amount of talking. Uh, and uh, on, a, on occasions I'd uh, almost give myself a bit of a challenge to time myself to uh, not actually say anything or not stand in the front of the class. Um, I found that uh, blending of a variety of resources engaged the students and it took the focus off me. And it pro provided me with a uh, a modern and clever ways of helping the students understand uh, what a complex uh, and invisible um, electrical concepts. Uh, the challenge, um, or the change in fact, in the students uh, was amazing. Um, they were awake, uh, they were interested, and um, they were challenged, and, uh, and they were self-motivated. Um, there was occasions when our classes would go over time uh, because no one had actually noticed what the time was. Um, what were the main challenges you found in sort of uh, moving towards a blended learning environment? Were the students generally supportive? Uh, the students loved it. Um, probably the, um, the biggest challenge to start with was getting the student from behind a standard uh, school desk and uh, getting them in front of a computer. Uh, so I had the challenge of actually getting access to computers and, um, and then access to the, uh, to the internet. Um, then there was a challenge of getting the students to actually start taking part in their own uh, learning and for some of them that was a bit of a shock. Um, there was a, a real need for them to, to take some ownership and uh, it was um, reliant on them to actually give it a go and not just to turn up and sit at the desk and basically be spoon fed. Um, Another big challenge was uh, putting the students actually in contact with the information that I wanted them to see. Uh, and uh, it had to be um, immediate, um, it had to be relevant, and it had to be really obvious when they found it. Uh, what was um, just time wasting uh, and, and of no benefit was sitting there and just Googling stuff all day, uh, or being sent to websites or uh, whatever, and there was no real clear defined reason for being there. Um, so what I did, I developed some resources uh, that were um, designed to specifically and quite deliberately take the student to um, sites and uh, on a journey uh, using really easy and uh, tiny steps that build on the previous. Uh, I included games, uh, short quizzes, uh, that uh, were designed to regularly sort of support and review and uh, I also provided answers uh, for guidance and so they could self-evaluate. Uh, if, if there was no answers there, um, they would be constantly asking, have I got this right? So it was really important for them to uh, be able to get instant feedback on how they were going. Yeah. Um, you sort of be, seem to be leaning into a topic we've discussed a little bit in the webinar at Kingsley, which is the role of the teacher in a blended learning classroom. Uh, how that changes. Some people have an idea that there's a smaller role for a teacher, 
Um, can you just tell us a little bit about how you see the teacher in a modern classroom and a blended learning classroom? Uh, my role was more about guidance uh, and support and, and much less about uh, lecturing. Uh, I chose to let go of the class. Um, I would float around the classroom and uh, I'd assist the students uh, as they needed help. Um, if I found that there was a, a common uh, issue, I'd hold the class up, we'd gain everyone's attention and we'd discuss it as a group. So you found it gave you a lot more time for sort of individual and small group discussion and that sort of thing? Oh, absolutely. The guys who were going well, um, you could leave them be and, and they would prefer that. Those who are struggling a bit, um, you could spend more time with. Um, I'm interested in your thoughts, Kingsley, on how blended learning and competency-based uh, learning sort of fit together. Um, so we heard sort of one of the other interviews I did, Carl Copeland talked about them basically being two parts of a personalised learning journey and I, yeah, was interested in your thoughts. Uh, well, I think a, a well-structured blended learning program fits perfectly with uh, competency-based training. The um, student can learn at their own pace uh, and if necessary, uh, in their own time. Um, I found those that were doing well could move on quickly and uh, they didn't get bored uh, and therefore disruptive and uh, they often helped um, some of their uh, colleagues in the class. Um, and it freed me up as a teacher to uh, help those who really needed the help. Sure. Um, can you tell me uh, a little bit more, Kingsley, about the challenges uh, either that you experienced directly or you've noticed other teachers encounter when they're uh, delivering blended learning programs and perhaps how they can address those challenges? Um, Okay, just give me a minute to think about that. Just get, ask me that question again. Um, some teachers have had difficulty implementing blended learning solutions into a classroom and just have troubles adapting their role. I mean, you've told us a little bit about how the role changes. Can you mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about um, how teachers who haven't been involved in blended learning before can start taking advantage of blended learning tools uh, and mixing it into their, their current training system, I suppose? How can a standard teacher transition to a blended learning support sort of role? I think that's uh, a, a personal journey for the teacher. Uh, they, or I, um, I wanted to take the focus off of myself. I didn't want to be seen as the font of all knowledge and what it meant was um, giving the students access to, to everything that would help them learn. So what do you have to do as a teacher? You have to be prepared to give them the benefit of the doubt that they can actually do it. You have to lose the concept that if you don't actually tell them, they won't know. Um, there's been many occasions where teachers have said to me, you know, I've told them, told them that 10 times. Uh, they should know it, but it's the teacher that's not learning from that because telling someone something 10 times isn't teaching them anything and it's also not helping them learn what it, what it is that they need to learn. Um, so I think you have to uh, take a step back as yourself and start giving them the opportunity to take part in their learning, um, to um, perhaps reduce the belief that a lot of people have that it's up to you to stand there and just fill their brain with everything that you can give forth from your own mouth um, and basically talk at students for hours on end and then wonder why they don't learn anything. Um, I think it's, it's really a confidence thing in yourself that um, it's, it's not just totally up to you and what you say is going to be what they learn. Yeah, no, that, that's really interesting. Thank you very much for that. Um, look, that, that's most of the areas I wanted to cover. Is there anything else you wanted to talk about in relation to blended learning or uh, tips, suggestions, any, anything like that at all? 
Um, I think some of the feedback that I got from my students was um, was valuable. I asked them questions. I, I um, did surveys, uh, and some of the comments that were quite interesting. And one of them uh, that came from a student, she said, one of the things she liked was I took I took them directly to where the information was. Um, and when I was asking the students to, to research something, I potentially would use half a dozen different websites or, or you know, a phrase in a book or, or something like that. Um, and I would give them the page number and I would tell them, give them the link to the web page that it would be on. And it would be really, really obvious when they got there what they were looking for. Um, and it meant that there was less time wasted and frustration actually trying to find what the answer to the question might be. Um, and it was immediate. So it was, it was a very efficient way. Um, so I found that interesting. That they, they really enjoyed the fact that it was not time wasting and it wasn't frustrating. It was, it was a, a, a deliberate, quick and immediate response to the bit we were looking at. Uh, I also, I to use animation and simulators a lot, uh, and uh, the students like that. They could play with it. They could muck around. They could blow things up, and you know, it didn't matter. Um, you could see it. Um, there was a, a couple that I used um, had circuits, electrical circuits, and you could see the current flowing, and you could see the, the voltage, and you could see the, the light switch on and off, or the load, um, you know, give off energy. Uh, another one was um, the halogen cycle in a, in a lamp. Very difficult thing to understand by reading a book or looking at a picture, but seeing the animation, it just was so easy and so clear. And what would perhaps take an hour to try and explain, you could get out uh, and people had a really good idea in, in a matter of a few minutes. So it was very efficient. Um, so I think um, by using tools that are out there. It might be a video clip on YouTube or it could be a website in another country. Um, it could be photographs that you've taken, all that kind of stuff. It can, it can make the learning very efficient and, uh, and help get across those really difficult concepts to, um, to get across when you're simply trying to use a whiteboard or read a book. Fantastic. Uh, thank you very much for your time today, Kingsley. It's been very informative. Um, Look forward to speaking to you uh, about these topics in the future.